And a bunch of kids are like making fun of me, like, why did your mom say your name weird? And I was offended a little bit. <laughs> I was acting and singing in my first musical play. I noticed that my mom was sitting right in the restricted front row area. She wasn't allowed to do that. <laughs> but I mean, I love it. <laughs> I remember my teacher said that I was doing really bad in history and it was just very embarrassing too because I had to translate that to my mom. There was this time that the dryer broke and then my dad likes to fix everything, but he goes to the store and comes home and he tells me, I need a thermostat. I'm like, dad, I don't know, there's no thermostat. And he talks to the guy again and then I'm like, you wanted a thermostat this whole time. He was like, Sometimes you just have to try to understand what I'm saying. The telemarketer, they'd come, she'd say, hey, uh, come talk to them, and I'd, I would stand on the phone. I'd find out that they're trying to convince me, like a you know, seven to eight year old, trying to sell me insurance, and I don't know how to respond to that. Every afternoon, my mom would walk my brother and I down to the park in our community. This little girl started kicking sand in my direction. My mom, without touching her, she puts her hand over her legs, and she just says, stop. She ran off. There were four or five big women pushing each other out of the way, grabbing each other by the shoulder, saying, let me get a piece of her, let me get a piece of her. My mom just sort of stood there like, why are you talking to me? I don't know what's going on. I sit in front of her, eight-year-old me, and, like, and I just did this with my hands to protect my mom. There were all these horrific things that were being said to my mom, and I had to translate all of that. I lost it. Now. I was crying and I, you know, standing behind her, holding onto her shirt. Soon enough, boom, punched straight to the face. Because her priorities were always work, work, work in order to survive, she had no time and energy to dedicate to learning English. When it comes to shame, I, f I feel like not only do they feel it, but I get the first wave of that shame. Having to hear things like, well, why don't your parents speak English? You know, while your dad or your mom are here in the background saying things like, oh, that lady, she didn't treat us very well. You know, she spoke like she was very mean. Since I was a young child trying to help translate for my parents, people always had this idea that I didn't have the capabilities of understanding what the conversation was about. And I know that when I was, you know, younger, I, oh God, I'd, I'd get so frustrated asking my parents, Mom, can you help me write a sentence? I'm sorry, Mika, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Go ask your dad. Okay, dad, can you help me write a sentence? I'm sorry, Mika, I don't know how to do that. She came home from work and she was like acting very frustrated and, and I was like, Mom, like, what's, what's up? And she was like, you know, sir, you don't understand. I was like, what, what do you mean, mom? And she's like, I'm stupid. And she said, I'm slow. I'm uneducated. And that's how like, I knew like, my biggest regret in my entire life is that I didn't teach my mom more English when I was a kid. My dad was a veteran in the Vietnam War. My parents had to flee the country. So every time I have to translate for them, because I think about why do I even have to do that? And it's because they sacrificed so much to be here for me. Now that I'm older, I feel like they don't even need to learn English. Knowing more than I should know about my parents as a younger kid makes me feel much more capable to take care of them when they're older. I just want to tell my parents how much I'm grateful for them, regardless of sometimes this forced responsibility of having to be there and translating for them. It's the least I can do to repay them for all their sacrifices. Mommy, <laughs> um, it means I love you, Mom, very much.